uh, turn our attention back to the judiciary again. The Chief Justice Kwesi Eninyabwa is calling for the adoption of the alternative dispute um, resolution as a preferred choice in resolving cases. He says the country cannot afford to postpone the total adoption of ADR when it is providing absolute and early resolutions of cases to many who use the traditional courts. Speaking at the launch of this year's ADR week in Kumasi, the Chief Justice urged lawyers to enhance their cap capabilities and capacities in alternative dispute resolution. Alternative dispute resolution was instituted in 2005 as an intervention to ease pressure on the regular court system. The ADR Act, Act 789 of 2010, which established ADR, makes it imperative for its adoption regardless of the court, including Ghana's apex court, the Supreme Court. The Ghana Bar Association, Ashanti region, we support it because it is faster, it is cheaper, and it reconciles members who are in conflict. According to Chief Justice Enini Abwa, ADR since its introduction has absolutely resolved 29,558 cases in the last 15 years. He wants all, especially disputants and their lawyers and the general public to embrace it. He wants the bar, a major stakeholder of the judiciary system, to help entrench alternative dispute resolution in the courts. Over the last one and a half decades, the ADR program has to a large extent performed impressively by helping the judiciary to reduce the load on the court by 29,558 cases. This is a positive support ADR has offered to the judiciary without which this load would have been borne by the courts under more stressful conditions. The good news is that this number of cases resolved at ADR are resolved absolutely without resorting to appeals, which also creates another backlog. I take this opportunity to urge the members of the bar as the major stakeholder of the judiciary to cooperate with us as we entrench ADR in our adjudication process. My laws, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, sections 72 and 73 of the Course Act 1993 at 459 CI 133 and the ADL Act, that is Act 789, 2010, makes it imperative that ADR should be adopted regardless of the courts, whether at the district court, circuit court, high court, court of appeal, and the Supreme Court. They need to work hard in Ghana to make ADR a preferred choice for disputants, and their lawyers is now. We cannot afford to postpone it indefinitely. Meanwhile, Justice Irene Charity Labi, in charge of ADR, has described ADR as a reliable partner to the traditional justice delivery system. She has been explaining how ADR can be accessed in Ghana. One may ask, how do I access the ADR? A court, at any stage of the proceedings, can refer a matter to the ADR. And any of the parties can also request for ADR during the trial. With the process being optional, the consent of the parties is sought before the matter is referred. The ADR program has been extended to 131 courts across the nation, with at least five mediators assigned to each of these courts. A total of 635 mediators have been trained and assigned to the 131 courts connected to the ADR program. A humanitarian report read to you. Let's bring in a lawyer, private legal practitioner and also law lecturer, Justice Abdullah, joining us on this um, development now. Thank you, sir, for your time. It appears that um, the ADR is a lesser known or at least um, not a favorable option for many lawyers, but then the Chief Justice, as we're hearing now, is asking that the officers of the court need to take advantage of this. How crucial is this in the um, judicial system? Lawyers are actually in favor of ADR. Um, um, lawyers do not make their money necessarily, income from, from litigating. Um, that is a wrong perception out there. Um, right. Mitigation is just but one 
of the means, and it's not even the fastest means that lawyers make their income. And so um, no lawyer would advise that he litigates when he knows he can resolve a matter um, outside of the courtroom. Um, indeed, you rather make your money faster and better through that means. And you're able to bring the parties together in a more reconciliatory uh, manner after, after having gone through alternative dispute resolution. So yes, um, we are lawyers are in support um, of ADR. Lawyers encourage ADR. Our laws encourage ADR, but um, maybe not in, in the way that one would have expected. Um, they are very, right. particularly when it comes to the criminal aspect of law, mm. um, it doesn't um, push that strongly for ADR. And which is why now um, lawyers are advocating for restorative justice, indeed, uh, because that's the way to go. Uh, we cannot be building um, bricks all the time and putting um, people who would have otherwise served the nation better behind bars when they could better serve us through other means. Um, mm. We spend a lot of money and time spending for people who are better used out, out there rather than in custody, um, that we spend so much money to protect, feed, um, um, accommodate, among other things. And so um, whichever way you look at it, whether I come to the criminal justice department or the civil aspect of it, um, um, restorative justice have, um, is a better option with criminal justice. And indeed, ADR is a better option with right. regards to um, um, civil disputes. Uh, and we're learning of some new figures, for instance, that the Chief Justice is putting out there. Some 20... 9,000 cases uh, in terms of the burden of cases on the judges being reduced as a result of the ADR. How does this work? Um, I, I am sure these are court-connected ADRs um, that the Chief Justice is reporting on. Now, what court-connected ADRs are disputes that arise and, and are reported to the court or um, suits filed at the court and, and the judges make reference to an alternative dispute resolution that is connected, um, or that is part of the court structures. And so, assuming you file a case against me, um, we go to court and the judge, judges, the judges look at the circumstances um, of the parties and the, and the very nature of the issues before it, and um, sometimes come to that conclusion that this matter could be better said um, at the ADR. And so they make reference that the parties um, see an ADR officer and attend a uh, resolution there. Mm. There are also, um, particularly for the co um, commercial um, aspects of our dispute resolution, that is mandatorily um, supposed to go through ADR. So um, once you file a commercial case at uh, a commercial court, um, you will be required to go through a mandatory ADR um, settlement um, resolution. It's only when it fails to um, um, be resolved then it goes back to the courtroom mm. for, for, the, for the appropriate um, legal issues to be determined in accordance with the customary laid down procedures. Right. So, and, um, so I believe, and in the district court, after the district court, they actually have an ADR week, I, I believe it's every September or thereabout, that whichever case comes automatically goes there. Otherwise, it becomes a selective, outside of this window, it's a selective ADR that um, the judges um, would always um, mm. refer to. So, and I guess, and I guess um, the aim... Maybe, maybe Sorry. Yeah, and yeah. I guess the aim of, of all of this is to ensure that there's justice. Um, and uh, part of the measures, some say, is also about showing up the numbers uh, both at the superior courts, be it High Court, the Court of Appeal, uh, and also the Supreme Court. We are learning of this new development, of course, uh, from the president nominating four persons to the um, position of Supreme Court justices. You've seen the names. Which one touches you the most? Um, naturally, the biggest surprise is um, that of um, Justice Gary, um, who is a very good friend, um, um, coincidentally. And, um, he's at the High Court, and being jumped from the High Court to the Supreme Court is a bit unusual. It's, on, it's, it's legal, it's lawful. Right. There's absolutely nothing legally wrong with that, except that it's an unusual. Um, because um, uh, 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 we are not used to seeing that. Usually you would find a high court judge being promoted to the Court of Appeal, maybe a year or two promoted to the Supreme Court. Now, the reason why it could be a year or two is because the difference really between the high court and the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court, the numbers are very slim. And so whereas you have to be, say, 10 years at the high court, um, you need to be um, 12, 12 years at the Court and of Appeal. 15, I guess. And then 15 years at the Supreme Court. Mm. And most of the judges that are appointed to the high court are actually 15 years or more. 
And so which means that um, by way of the experience, they are already qualified to be at the Supreme Court. And Justice Gaiwu is one of such persons. He's um, um, qualified to be at the Supreme Court, but he was actually qualified to be at the Supreme Court even before he was appointed to the High Court. Um, but one would have expected, if you go by our usual way of doing things, would have gone to the Court of Appeal and then maybe a year or two go to the Supreme Court. But mm-hmm. this time, he decided to jump. Like I said earlier, it, there's nothing legally wrong with that um, because there's nothing legally requiring that you go from one level to the other before you end up at the Supreme Court. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, that's the yeah. question about the recent appointments being done into the, uh, I mean, the, the bench. The question as to whether or not it's just routine, um, as we're seeing by the president. What more do we know about it? Um, indeed, I think this is a, probably this president has appointed the most to the judiciary than any other president of, um, in the history of our republic. And um, and what I from at, across levels, whether it's the Supreme Court or the Court of Appeal or even the High Court or any other court, um, um, lower courts, you know, this president has appointed the most of the judges than any other um, president ever in our history. And that ought to be put on record. Um, unfortunately, um, we need a lot of the judges. We do not, we, we, um, we have so many cases that um, we need so many judges to be able to handle the backlog of cases. And we are still in the era where cases still last for over five years and 10 years at the courtroom. And so um, without, having the necessary logistics and personnel, we will still be having those complaints going forward. And there, um, it's, it's, it's just right that we have enough to, particularly at the, um, the court of first instance, the high courts and then the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the um, circuit courts, and indeed even the district court. We need a lot more because these are the places where most of the cases go to. With regard to the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal, um, of course, now the, the, because of the multiplicity of regions and the and the right of appeal without any limitations on the party, there are a lot more cases go on appeal. But I would believe that a lot of cases truncate at the Court of Appeal and the High Court. Um, um, going to the Supreme Court um, is not something that happens that often, and you do not have much of um, um, uh, the case of uh, cases that um, probably will commence from the Supreme Court apart from constitutional related cases, which are not that many. And so, but for appeals are so limited going to the court, Supreme Court. Very few people are able to pursue an appeal all the way to the Supreme Court. And so I did not think that we need so much members at, um, of the Supreme Court justices. Um, and this brings, of course, in the issue of the, um, the ceiling to the Supreme Court um, um, as well. Um, we may find ourselves in a situation where um, because now we are, we probably have a system where everybody um, goes to the Supreme Court on the issue of electoral disputes. We may likely find ourselves finding every president appointing so many other people who do not have ceiling at the Supreme Court simply because you would like to have uh, members of the Supreme Court who are either in favor of his political party or, or some way or somehow affiliated to his ideological principles. And so, um, believing that once you are there, um, um, the uh, favors are also that um, decisions will be made in favor of the uh, ruling government. And this is, of course, at the backdrop of um, the recent Supreme Court decision where the ins- um, almost continuous 7 0 issues became a mantra that almost every case um, that appears to be against the ruling government um, goes in favor of the government. And so it, it has brought in this yet this um, debate about having a ceiling at the Supreme Court. And I think it's, it's, it's high time we had a conversation around this area and find a lasting solution to that before we find ourselves having um, about 100 um, judges sitting at the Supreme Court, which will not augur well for our national development. Hmm. We'll see how that uh, unfolds, but I'm grateful, um, lawyer Je- Justice Abdullah, for joining us here. For good and country always. The Pulse now.